For my computer final, I studied cloud computing. This is my presentation. It's entitled Cloud Computing and Computer Forensics by Michelle Truick. I will tell you a little bit about cloud computing. I'll tell you what it is, who's using it and why, how cloud computing affects computer forensics, and some of the problems that accompany it. Some of these problems will include locating evidence, admissibility in court, and expectation of privacy. I will also provide an example of cloud computing in a court case and tell you about some security measures that should be used with cloud computing. What is cloud computing? Cloud computing is a new, fast-growing technology. It is independent of the hardware and software used for regular computing, and it offers access to, the, to different applications via the Internet. Cloud computing is broken up into three basic layers. Infrastructure, platform, and application. Often, these layers are portrayed as a pyramid, as seen here. Who is using cloud computing and why? More and more businesses are moving their operations into cloud computing because it is reliable, stable, easy to use, cheap, and fast. Cloud computing acts just like a regular server, but it skips over the added expenses and time-consuming process of purchasing more computing power. If more people start visiting the company's site, the company can scale up to a larger server almost instantly. It gets more computing power as needed from the cloud. If less people start visiting the company's site, the company can scale down to a smaller server in a short amount of time as well. Also, since such a vast amount of people are now using the cloud, the fee that accompanies some cloud applications is quite small. The price of maintaining and monitoring the cloud is distributed among its millions of members. Some of the main cloud applications include Windows Live, Google Docs, and Salesforce. Like many other technological advancements, applications for cloud computing have experienced some legal issues. As you know, computer forensics examines the legal evidence on computers and other electronic media. If you recall our assignment entitled Evidence Acquisition, then you remember using SafeBlock to search the files of a USB disk. If you thought that this process was hard, imagine trying to find this information on the cloud. One major problem is locating evidence in the cloud. Many cloud applications have different records retention policies that call for the routine elimination of electronic information when it has outlived its business purpose. These rules make it difficult to obtain forensic evidence in the cloud because the data may be continuously replicated and or overwritten. Additionally, data stored in the cloud may be copied an infinite amount of times. Cloud users may not even realize how many copies of their data exist in a cloud environment. They cannot tell where data is at any given point in time because it is always being moved around. Evidence in the cloud may be dispersed across and stored in multiple data centers all over the world. It can result in multiple copies of data being stored in different locations. If forensic investigators locate evidence in the cloud, the data may not be admissible in a court of law. Already, there is an extreme lack of case law addressing admissibility of forensic evidence in a court case. The creation of cloud computing simply added to these problems. The investigator providing the forensic data must be able to demonstrate that it is relevant, authentic, and not precluded by the best evidence rule. We learned that the best evidence rule states that copies are allowed in court only if it accurately reflects the original. Under this rule, multiple copies of an electronic file may constitute as an original. However, if the evidence has multiple copies stored in different locations, is it still admissible in a court of law? Additionally, the actual physical location of the data may determine if or how it is processed in a court of law. If the data is located on a server based in China but was uploaded in America, prosecutors may have to adhere to Chinese law. Another problem with cloud computing is the expectation of privacy. 
Forensic investigators need to maintain an expectation of privacy. Although they, although they must treat a computer like a closed container, one loses his expectation of privacy if the files or documents are made available. Yet, what is considered to be private information if it is stored on an application based on the internet? The data could be stored in a location where privacy laws are unenforced or even non-existent. Unlike personal computers, filing cabinets, or safes, the data stored in the cloud may not be considered private property. After uploading the information to the cloud, it can be accessed and used in ways that individuals never envisioned or intended, and with very little oversight. Users must understand that by storing their data on another individual's online application, they lose a degree of control over their sensitive information. The responsibility for protecting that information from hackers and internal data breaches then falls into the hands of the hosting company rather than the individual user. Many times, investigators have trouble determining if data in the cloud is considered to be in plain view or if they need a warrant or a consent to search the information. We learned that warrants and consents to search are already very tricky fields. In early October, we read a blog about the Andrus case in which Anders' 91-year-old father gave federal agents permission to search his son's password-protected computer file. This case provided a good example of the problems with third-party consents to search a computer. Since the federal rules of digital evidence have not really reached the realm of cloud computing, investigators often experience even more problems in maintaining one's expectation of privacy. It is very difficult to determine if the application provider, like Google Docs or Windows Live, can give consent to search, or if it must be more specific and geared to the actual cloud user. One court case about cloud computing included a criminal investigation by the FBI into a company named Pulse Marketing. The company allegedly sent millions of spam emails promoting and offering to sell a Kai Berry and had established a system create, to create multiple Yahoo and Gmail email addresses to send the spam. The FBI investigated the company to determine if it had violated a rule that prohibits using false information to create multiple fake domains or email addresses and using those domains and addresses to send out multiple commercial email messages. The case was rather difficult to solve because Pulse Marketing stored all of its information in the cloud through Google Docs. Although the FBI eventually obtained a warrant and gained access to Google Docs, it was a very tedious process. This case actually spurred a campaign to update the federal rules of evidence to include cloud computing. If you're going to use any cloud computing applications, I suggest that you take time to review the security agreement between the user and the third-party internet provider. This will ensure that your data is safe and unavailable to unauthorized disclosures. For some quick security tips about cloud computing, you can simply visit this website. Here is the website, and if you scroll down, you'll find steps to protect your information. In using the cloud, you'd want to know who owns the data, where the data will reside and will it be backed up. Does the customer have the right to approve and advance any transfer of the data to another state or country? Who will have access to the data and will there be different levels of access? Who will supervise the project and will there be monitoring and auditing of the policies and procedures? What procedures will be followed when the contract terminates? And what security measures are in place? In conclusion, you'll want to remember that cloud computing uses no hardware and no software. Many businesses use it because it's fast, reliable, easy, and cheap. Some of the main cloud applications include Windows Live, Google Docs, and Salesforce. Cloud computing has three basic layers, which include the bottom layer, infrastructure, the middle layer, platform, and the top layer, application. The main problems with cloud computing and computer forensics are locating, locating evidence, admissibility in court, 
and the expectation of privacy. Hopefully, the federal rules of evidence will up be updated to include cloud computing. Just remember that if you're going to put information on the cloud, take precaution and use security measures. I hope you enjoyed my presentation about cloud computing. If you want more information, simply visit my website, 